another video. Today we are traveling to Awadia. We're gonna go check out the mall and go shopping. Um, and then we are gonna- The view in Awadia next to the Awadia Mall. Angela is gonna take you guys over there and you guys gonna see the view from the water all the way across that you can see all the way down to the the island that we just, uh, the Secheo Island that we can see because that's how clear the, and the weather it is today. Get you guys closer. A matter of fact, I've never been over here. We always pass it, but I never stop to like actually admire how beautiful like the scenery is. So I don't know if you guys can see, but like right there is the um, the area that he was explaining to you guys. Let me see if I can zoom you guys in. You can see it a little bit better. It's right there that he was talking about. And then basically, here's the coast. It's so beautiful. But when you're passing the interstate, you see it so much better. Like it's just, it's so beautiful. I'm trying to get you guys the mountain view because um, Anthony is actually from San Sebastian. That way you guys can take a look at the mountain view that we see every time we are passing by um i didn't get the video of the mall but the mall is about like right there um i don't know maybe you guys can see the cars from there it's so beautiful oh look there's a boat right there and the water's so calm beautiful right yes yeah, it's very beautiful. It's, it's actually very calm. Good morning, guys. Today, we decided to wake up really early. And we woke up to no, no water. water. <laughs> it's not a surprise. It's always, it's either the power or the water that goes out. And <laughs> it's not fun because you have to use. Brush your teeth with a bottle of water. Yep. Woohoo. Um, <laughs> so now we are going to go get breakfast. To El Mason. To our, favorite Amazon, place. our favorite place. I wish they would have this um, in Riverview or close to Tampa. Or Tampa. That they only have it in Orlando, but they really ha they have really good uh, breakfast. Um, they have coffee. Uh, they have iced coffees. They strong have strong coffee. Yes, <laughs> very strong coffee. Well, I don't think in Orlando they don't. Do they? Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. I, I feel like it's stronger here, but um, I need them to have to have. A, to be in Tampa. Then from El Sun, we are gonna go straight down. Through the mountains, we are gonna go straight to Ponce. Ponce, yeah. but we're gonna take the, tra the what's, what's the, what road are we gonna start on all the way down? I probably don't know. We're just gonna follow the GPS and we're <laughs> gonna take the curves. Curves, curves, Have you done curves, that curves. before? Yes. Re no. Like when you used to live here? But we have no we usually take uh road number two okay so you guys those. you guys will get to come with us i'll try to show as much as i can hopefully it's not too long of a video if it is i will do another part so you guys could see it um unless you guys like long videos then i can make long videos but it's long time to edit <laughs> But yeah, we're gonna have uh, so, some good pictures, some uh, yes. good places that we're gonna visit. Uh, we, if we can, we might uh, head all the way from Ponce. Oh wow, uh, Ponce, uh, Yauco, uh, Cabo Rojo, La Palguera. We're gonna try to visit all those uh, nice, uh, good places. Maybe we can get some uh, good food here in today too. Yes. I want to see maybe if we can squeeze in Racon, like the where the where the beaches. They have really good uh, views, so you guys stay tuned. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, be part of our family, and follow us. You can see Jaden right back here. Yeah, <laughs> And Elena's back here. Yep. I don't know if you guys can see her. Ooh. And then um, Isaiah is 
with Abuela and Abuela. So they're the, he's like the king to them. So, all right guys, count it. Lares. In one of the mountains. In one of the mountains, and we are hitting about 2,050 feet in elevated. Yep. So, this is pretty high. We're almost to our destination. <laughs> almost there. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, I think we can go. Okay, so where we are... We like made it to Ponce. Well, we made it to Ponce. And we are now at the historical area of where the like 1800s of original uh, Indians. Yes. So it's like I guess the way my mother-in-law was explaining is they you, they were digging here to build, and when they were building, they noticed that they saw what like bones, fossils, fossils, fossil yeah. bones of uh, from the old tributes. Uh huh. So they. They could not dig no more, and they just built exactly um, something for them. Yeah, like a conservation park. Yeah. That's the Centro Ceremonial Indígena. Yeah. Ponce Policia. That was the police that went by us. Okay. To uh, cultures of indigenous of Puerto Rico. My mother-in-law is trying to figure out what we can do and what we can't do. You guys, look at this picture. Let me see if I can get you close to it. It's so pretty. Bye. What happened? comenzaron a navegar desde las Bahamas y Florida por todas las islas, las Turco y Caico, hasta que entonces llegan a la cuenca del Caribe, llegan al español y finalmente se establecen en Puerto Rico. Su tecnología era bien rudimentaria, utilizaban, afilaban piedras con, con instrumentos, utilizaban la cáscara de arigüeyo y del coco para platos y otros utensilios y caracoles como herramientas. And they use uh, caracoles and old shells as a tool. Luego, in Mary, the de Puerto Rico, hace more than 800 years ago, originario de la región de Oh, look, Orinoco, it's in English. Venezuela. Comienzan a navegar por todas las antillas menores hasta que finalmente llega a Puerto Rico, 
ellos van a introducir lo que es el trabajo en cerámica para hacer vasija, van a introducir el arte, ellos van a pintar sus vasijas, van a introducir el hacha propiamente con el ex ¿verdad? Con el, con el agarre de, del hacha. Van a introducir el arco y la flecha también. 800 years ago. Toda esta cerámica fue encontrada aquí en, en, en la zona arqueológica de Chile. Al igual que también fueron encontrados 150 objetos humanos completos. Por ejemplo, y más de 200 objetos también. A esta, una comunidad muy callejera. Aquí no hay un callejero. Este es un centro ceremonial indígena. Aquí se encontraba para intercambiar juegos del Badú, que es el, el famoso juego que se hace en el Badei. Para intercambiar areto, areto es celebraciones, contar, ¿verdad? O decir la historia oral, hacer canciones. Y también, se, y también se intercambiaban instrumentos de trabajo, se intercambiaban alimentos, semillas y otros utensilios en tierra. Aquí venían indios, inerís y pretaínos de distintas partes de Puerto Rico. Este parque se especializa en la cultura inerí y pretaína. Es importante recalcarlo. Solamente se ha investigado un 10% del parque, otro un 10% o un 15%, todavía queda un 85% por investigar, explorar, excavar, desarrollar. Sí. Entonces, only, they only discover 15% of the whole park. And they have they still have 85% to discover the rest of the park to excavate and to look for all the stuff. Mm. Okay. Like I was saying before, the Imeri they came from the Orinoco region in Venezuela. They start traveling up the Lizard Antilles until they settle in Puerto Rico. They introduce the work in vessels and ceramic. They also introduce art since they painted their vessels. They also introduce the bat and arrow. So they updated Puerto Rico with the latest technology of the pre columbian age in the Caribbean. Also, the Ignatis are going to introduce the Taino culture in Puerto Rico since the Tainos are going to come out from the Ignatis. The Ignatis is the first step of the revolution of the Taino. They use brick, brick stones to flatten their forehead. The flatten of forehead is a concept of beauty in the Arapa culture. This Indian woman particularly is from the Orinoco region in Venezuela. They are the closest relatives of the Inmenes, still living today. So anybody that wanted to study the Arawa culture, that's the culture where the Inmeni and Pretaino comes from, has to go to Venezuela, interview them, study them, because like I say, they are the closest relatives. And that's a concept of beauty, to flat the forehead. A concept of beauty that you can see it also in Central America and in South America as well. This stone right here was found in the class of Incifile. The work has not been finished. You can see a petroglyph marked in white chalk. That's a specialized white chalk that archaeologists use. And you can see the cut right in the head. That cut was made by stones. They used to make access out of, they used to make access with the stones, so they cut the stone right in the middle. Okay. The use of this stone is unknown. Some archaeologists say it was a sacred stone for adoration. Other archaeologists say that it was a stone used as a tool of punishment since the neck of a retaino could fit in that hole. Another ecologist said that it was used as an astronomical club. But all concord that the work wasn't finished. It took them around one year to do all this work. And still the work on the spot wasn't finished. And the use is still unknown to us. Wow. This shell right here is the Iwera shell. 
the Iguera chills are the chills that we use for the maracas. Mm -hmm. The maracas is a very important musical instrument for the Gregorino because of religious religious belief and other religious themes, songs and words. Now, now they don't use maracas for secular music, but they didn't have the difference between secular music and religious music. For them any type of music, it was for enjoyment but also for preaching and praying as well. You can see the work in the Iguera Chels. This work represents gods or forces of nature because when they checked the maraca, mm -hmm. they thought that they were also giving offerings to the main god that it was carved in the Iguera Chel. Wow. This type right here, represents the 500th anniversary of the discovery of Puerto Rico. These people, they have a strong Indian heritage, so they were called upon to make a stand of how life was in Tibet during, during the pre-Columbian years. Here you can see them playing at the Batu, working with corn, the Ine, actually they brought corn from South America, you can see them here with their TV or polio, with a wet shell serving water. This work right here is stone, is tools of stones mm -hmm. or their human remains that you can see them here in Tibet. Decorative shell, use of jewelry and other ceramic work that are made to look like animals. And now this human remain right here is from the Pritaino age. This was a male around 20 to 30 years old. You can see that he's in a fetus position because when they died they used to break the bones and bury them in a fetus position. The fetus position means rebirth for the Pritaino culture. Since a baby is in a fetus position when it's beginning his life in the world, they thought that when your life ended in this world, you have to go back in a fetus position to the gods. Now, the Kohoa ritual is a seed that has hallucinating effects. The Bolique, the Bolique is the high priest, the one that it was permitted mainly to smoke the cohoa to her house for now. Once the hallucinating effect started, he thought he was speaking with the gods, but really it was just the effect of the sea. Then when the effects went away, he met with the cacique. The cacique is the main chief of the Yucayeque. The Yucayeque is the Arawak word for Indian village. And then he spoke to the cacique, he told them what the gods wanted them to know. Then the cacique would gather the Yucayeque, the Indian village, and tell the, the village, the community, what was the message of the gods. And the semi right here, the semi is a very important landmark of the Pretalino culture. The semi represents minor gods and also represents important cacique that their contribution marked the history of that Yucatec. They represent minor gods like the bad god, that is the god of death, some represent Koki, the very important force of nature. The main god was Yukiju, also known as Jokabu, that mainly lived in the region of Ajunke, according to Taino to and Taino. There was also an evil god, named Huracan, that's where the word hurricane comes from. And he has a, they say that Yukiju, the main god, had a mother called Bibi, and that they were both eternal. They had no beginning and no end. That's very curious because it's one of the, same, it's one of the main important theological facts of Christianity, that Jesus God has a mother, and Jesus is eternal. Be, Without ever knowing any concept of Christian the theology, they have one of the one of the most important Christian tradition in their thoughts and in their 
in your theology, without ever having any contact with Christian theology before the Spaniards arrival around the 1500s. And the Pretaino is the third English society in Puerto Rico. You can see that, uh, that their word is not is more developed. You can see this word for farming and agriculture as well. This ceramic word with animal shape. And also in very important jewelry. You can see these cones right here, these green stones. They're not typical from this region. But since Tibet was also a ceremonial place where exchange of products, rocks, instruments, stories, and music was part of the everyday life. So that jewelry that, is, that, that you can see right there was probably brought from another region here in Tibet when the main, like we like to say, Tibet conventions were taking place. Many Indians from all over the islands and some archaeologists say from the Dominican Republic gather in this place and they do all and they do all kind of work, religious work, sports, storytelling, since they didn't have a different language. The Moike was the person that was in charge of telling the story to the young ones of oral history. And also very important sacred music for them. So they gather here to pray, play sports. Exchange merchandise, stones, and exchange ceramic work, and use a very important point of trade of the Britaino and the Americo here in Cities. And the Taino are going to be the last people society in Puerto Rico, and these are, and these are the ones that are going to be the Spaniards in the 15th century. You can see the work of the stones of the Tainos is very, very, very developed. They also have what we call Aralitico. Those are hoops made out of stones. They used to wear them around their neck and waist so they can play the batu. They weigh around 50 pounds to 100 pounds. It's very heavy and they used to wear them to play the batu. The batu is like modern day soccer. You can play with the ball, you can touch the ball with any part of your body except your hands. You cannot touch the ball with your hands. Or else you will lose the point. And this is a duo. The duo is the main seat of the cacique. It's like a throne chair. This, this one in particular is very important because it's made out of wood. Many of them are made out of stones, but this is made out of wood. The wood is from the Seiba. That's a very, very strong wood. This was found in Villalba, right here. When the Spaniards came, they're going to submit the Tainos to hard labor and also the viruses that they carry from Europe to the Americas, especially to Puerto Rico, is going to finish the life of the Taino plus the hard work that they paid for. And around the 1600s, the Taino culture and the Taino society were more more in Puerto Rico. And in exchange, they brought the African slaves to the island, and that's when the, the institution of slavery was introduced in Puerto Rico. Wow. When the Ta when the Spaniards also came to Puerto Rico and met the Taino, the Taino were at war with another Indian tribe called the Caribe, and that's the, that's where the word Caribbean comes from. The Caribe. According to Chronicle, they were cannibalists. They used to eat human flesh, not for their flavor, but they thought that their powers could be passed down to them by eating human flesh. So that's why the Tainos were very, very afraid of the Caribe. They mainly eat male Tainos, especially warriors and high priests and caciques, because they thought that they were the strongest and they, that the power could be passed down to them by eating them. But when the Spaniards came, they made a truce so they can fight on the Spaniards, but the superiority of technology that the Spanish had was, was, was very strong. They had armor, swords, shields, cannons. They had the big chiefs, La Calavera. So that's 
technological superiority was the only match for the technology of the of the Taino Caribbean, and eventually the native world groups, and the rest is history. Then the Colombian age began in Puerto Rico until 1898, that the American capital of Puerto Rico and still the Spanish. Do you have any other questions? No, oh, very oh. good, very good. Thank you, thank you for coming. Yeah. And the archaeological site, when you go out here, you take left, you go downstairs, you're going to cross a bridge, you're going to see a botanical garden. The, that botanical garden is mainly of the plants and fruits that the pretaino used to have in their everyday life and work with in their everyday life. And then at the end, you're going to see the batallas and the classes of the Manila ceremony classes. Perfect, perfect. Thank you for coming. Thank you no. for coming. What is your name? Luis Fernandez. Luis Fernandez, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for coming. Oh. Like you said, you guys hear Luis Fernandez. We're going to go outside now. We're just going to follow the, the construction and the line and see what we can find. Keep watching, guys. Now we're just gonna follow the road. My father just said that he, uh, in all his life of years, he has never been here. This is the first time. It's always something new to visit in Puerto Rico. Always. How the tribe was discovered. In the 1975. Wow. <laughs> and then I saw Froding. She's holding, she's bracing for impact. Woo! Botanic, nat natural botanic. It's a natural botanic garden, a specific garden. We have over 57 types of plants and trees. Wow. Different to identify. That's a calabash. Fruit of doing plates. Timacino, Timacio, yep. Hobos, a little fruit. Capa roja. My parents taking some pictures or trying to, you know. Amarindo. Come on, puppy. Come on.
Oh, ¿qué es eso, pa? ¿Cuál dice? Mispero. 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 Oh. There are bees in there. <laughs> My dad always smelling, Where? checking. Smell good. Smell good. That's what he say. In Christmas time, it should be very good to walk through here with the wind and the nice cold weather, or not cold, fresh weather. It is good. Yep. I say, uh, <laughs> Is that an egg? Yuka Jeke Village. Just a replica of the Chronicle during the uh, XYXVI century. <laughs> during the 1600 thank you mommy small space the rocks come on guys I say uh, come on come on puppy I did come on You can see we're going through a little tunnel. The, the trees. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I would love to be through here. Explore, explore everything around. <sighs> Clean air. Archaeology area. 1975, the tropical storm Eloisa caused the Portuguese I river. Area. Yep. Here is where they found the remains of all the, all the Indians and all the historical bones.